XFL and the USFL merged together to create one powerful spring football league called the UFL. Yes, they finally listened. The USFL and the XFL did what we all hoped they would do after promising seasons from each league, and they... Yes! Yes! They both stepped into the high-tech fuck machine from the fly and emerged as the United Football League, an eight-team league that will kick off on Saturday, March 30th. Their first game is a good one. The XFL champion Arlington Renegades will take on the USFL champion Birmingham Stallions. Today, I'll break down some of the key rules. Uh, which players and coaches survived the eight-team purge when the leagues merged? The one thing you need to know about the UFL, the football played will be... Players are gonna play hard-nosed. Hard-nosed. Real quick, if you really want to stay up to speed with UFL news, uh, give James Larson a follow on Twitter, at James Larson PFN. Uh, I don't think there's anyone that I've seen on Twitter who covers the leagues better than he does, so show him some love. Now, the teams that didn't survive the USFL were... <laughs> The Pittsburgh Maulers, the Philly Stars and their disgusting Ronald McDonald murder rampage uniforms, the New Orleans Breakers, the Houston Gamblers, and the New Jersey Generals who had to go back to their full-time job as For a great low rate, go with the General. The XFL lost the Vegas Vipers, the Orlando Guardians, and surprisingly the Seattle Sea Dragons who had a very nice following. The Houston Roughnecks won the Battle of Houston by name and switched from the XFL to play in the USFL uh, conference. Essentially, the Roughnecks absorbed the gamblers like a superior twin in the womb. So, see kids, gambling never does pay off. The XFL YouTube channel has also been converted to the new UFL channel. Now, the championship will be played in St. Louis on June 16th. The 2024 United Football League season basically combines the rules of the XFL and the USFL from a year ago. They adopted the XFL's point after touchdown options, and now the UFL offers three scrimmage play choices following a touchdown, allowing teams to score one, two, or three points. In an odd move, they got rid of their good kickoff rules, and now they're going to mirror the traditional college NFL style kickoffs, but each kick is gonna begin from a team's 20 yard line and touchbacks will be placed at the receiving team's 25 yard line. An alternate possession option in the fourth quarter allows a team tied or trailing to choose a fourth and 12 from its own 28 yard line after a score. You know, the thing we've all been begging the NFL to try for years. Additional rules include the two legal forward passes on a single play, specific penalties for defensive pass interference, either a 15 yard or a spot foul can be enforced and coaches can challenge any ruling on the field as long as they have at least one timeout. Overtime involves alternating attempts to score from the opponent's five yard line in a best of three format. And did I mention that within all the rules, the football will be played at a level that is indeed play hard nose. Let's start with the Birmingham Stallions. Head coach Skip Holtz brings back his two time USFL champions with key returning players from both the 2022 and 2023 title winning squads. They've got some big names coming back like wide receiver Victor Bolden, quarterback Jamar Smith, and tight end Jay Sternberger. Despite retaining their head coach and a handful of crucial members, the Stallions missed out on securing the 2023 USFL MVP quarterback Alex McGoo. United States of America, Donald. And the league's top kicker, Brandon Aubrey, who, if you don't remember, lit it up in the NFL last year for the Cowboys. Former Kansas State quarterback Adrian Martinez, who led the Wildcats to a Big 12 title in 2022, is expected to be the day one starter. But they also signed former Panthers QB Matt Corral, who is the only former NFL QB who clearly gets a roster upgrade by joining the UFL. The Arlington Renegades, the Gades, 
were uh, the surprise success story of the XFL last year, going four and six in the regular season and then going on to win the whole damn thing. Head coach Bob Stoops and QB Luis Perez are returning. So they're keeping the biggest two factors from their title year ago. Luis Perez is basically the Tom Brady of the spring league teams. He's been around longer than any quarterback. He's pretty good, played in every single league, and his wife left him for a jujitsu trainer. That's the real connection. Also returning to the Renegades is former All-USFL linebacker Donald Payne, the sole player in either league who notched 117 tackles as a gambler in 2022. Time for the pain train, baby, yes sir. Gene Harris, who led in interceptions across both the XFL and USFL last year with five, is also making a comeback to Arlington. And as always, watch out for everyone's favorite paisan at a tight end. Sal, leave it a gun, but take a the canela. Then we've got the DC Defenders who play the San Antonio Brahmas week one. Finishing the 2023 regular season with an impressive nine and one record, DC remains undefeated on their home turf since 2020, the birthplace of the vaunted beer snake. They were hands down the best XFL team all of last season with Offensive Player of the Year, Jordan Tayamu at the helm. I still don't know how they let Arlington beat them in the championship, but they should be one of the favorites again with their head coach, Reggie Barlow and quarterback Jordan Tayamu returning. 2023 XFL Coach of the Year, Reggie Barlow is my favorite to have the best team out of the gate to start the season. You might remember Reggie asking, You like football? And the answer still is, Yeah, I do. we do. We do too. The defender's biggest obstacle was losing the XFL's leading rusher, Abram Smith, to a torn ACL this last week. He amassed an impressive 791 yards and seven touchdowns in 10 games. They do have former Texans and Colts receiver Kiki Cutie on the roster as well. But look for the defenders to come out hot. The Houston Roughnecks. Head coach Curtis Johnson's Gamblers finished the season with a 5-5 five five record, falling short of the playoffs but showing some fight in the competitive South Division. After the rebranding of the Gamblers to the Roughnecks, they secured nearly double the number of all USFL and all XFL players compared to the nearest franchise, nabbing nine of those top players. A big reason they should be competitive again is quarterback Jarrett Garantano, who spent some time in Denver's practice squad a couple years back. The Necks also feature one of the league's most talented receiving cores, spearheaded by the return of pass catcher Justin Hall, who was fifth in the USFL last year with 515 yards. The Roughnecks also have former first round linebacker Reuben Foster on roster. And of course, Shamarius Gilmore. Who is Shamarius Gilmore? I don't know, but the name Shamarius is too beautiful not to mention. The Roughnecks are also returning key players such as the 2023 USFL Offensive Player of the Year, running back Mark Thompson, two-time All-USFL defensive tackle Toby Johnson, and 2022 USFL Defensive Player of the Year Chris Odom. And then we've got the Memphis Showboats who will be playing the Roughnecks week one. Under former New Orleans Breakers coach John DeFilippo, the Showboats have undergone a little bit of a facelift. If Tom Brady can do it, so can they. The Showboats retained USFL Special Teams Player of the Year, Derek Dillon, who holds the record for the longest kickoff return for a touchdown in pro football history. And the team has also found some leadership with the addition of quarterback and Twitter hero, Case Cookis. Oh, I lost my ring, dude. Oh. My wife's gonna be pissed. They also have Vinny Papale at Whiteout, whose name might sound familiar if you've seen the Mark Wahlberg movie, Invincible, which has convinced thousands of Philadelphia men that they could play in the NFL if just given the chance. What a Mark Wahlberg movie should teach you. I'm a human being, I'm not a piece of art. Yes, bravo. But yes, Vinny is the son of Vincent Papale featured in that movie. I'm a peacock. Flying into a rainbow! Then we've got the St. Louis Battlehawks, who play the Michigan Panthers week one. 
leading the highest drawing team in the XFL with a 7-3 record. Head coach Anthony Betch, please, faced the disappointment of missing the XFL playoffs after losing a tiebreaker to the now-defunct Seattle Dragons. The Battlehawks are a sensation in St. Louis, begging the question, is there anything else to do in St. Louis? I'm just, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. The Battle... Battlehawks are awesome. And if you followed anything spring ball related, the Battlehawks are, are by far the most popular team in any of the leagues. The fan base is legit, and I respect the hell out of all the Hawkheads out there. And even though the Battlehawks will, of course, be playing players are going to play hard nosed ball, just remember in St. Louis, Ka is the law. Ka -ka, Ka -ka is the law. St. Louis got a huge boost when Battlehawks quarterback A.J. McCarron, who threw for 2,150 yards and 24 touchdowns last season, decided to return despite earning a spot on the Bengals 2023 roster. Obviously, his job was stolen by Jake Browning there, but this is very cool to see A.J. back. McCarron chose to play last season so his kids could watch him play real football. It was a touching story and reminded us all that the love of the game is still real. Also, since Ka is the law, legally McCarron had to play or be put to death by way of birds. I don't know what that really means, but it sounds horrible. Despite exiting the first dispersal draft without 2023 XFL Special Teams Player of the Year, Darius Shepard, the Battlehawks have padded their roster with the addition of XFL Defensive Player of the Year, Peta, oh fuck me, Taumo Penu. Taumo Pay, Taumo Penu, who notched eight and a half tackles for a loss and seven and a half sacks in 10 games last season. Uh, they just signed defensive back Channing Stribling, who had an insane seven picks in 2022. They added former Dragons wide receiver Jacor Pearson, who led both leagues in catches with 60 and yards at 670. And another stud in Hakeem Butler, who had 51 receptions. AJ McCarron might have returned just to try and break every single XFL, USFL, and UFL passing record with Pearson and Butler. The Michigan Panthers, head coach Mike Nolan's Panthers added former Chiefs defensive end Breland Speaks off the edge, which should create some havoc. I'm really hoping they're also able to land Legeria Sneed, Chris Jones, and Patrick Mahomes as well. But that seems improbable, if I'm being honest at this moment. They also snagged all USFL tailback Reggie Corbin and all USFL safety Shalom Luani to try to improve on a 4-6 season from 2023. They did add former Oklahoma linebacker Deshaun White and all USFL linebacker Gerard Fernandez. And 2023 USFL Defensive Player of the Year Frank Ginda. You might also recognize the name at wide receiver Samson Nakua brother of Puka, who obviously lit secondaries on fire as a rookie with the Rams. EJ Perry appears to be the starting quarterback for the Panthers heading into the season, and my dreams were ruined when I learned QB Davis Cheeks retired. That cheeky bastard retired before I could wordplay his name into my YouTube grave. Last but not least, we have the San Antonio Bramas. Despite winning only three out of 10 games in 2023, new head coach Wade Phillips and his Bramas are looking like they could compete in the UFL in 2024, mostly because they have Wade fucking Phillips calling the shots. Wade coached the Roughnecks last season and is taking over for Heinz Ward, who coached the Brahmas last year. The team's foundation is already solid, featuring key players such as quarterback Quentin Dormady, Chase Garbers, who I am immediately calling the Gerber baby, and the man I hope starts at quarterback, Tom Flacco, brother of Joe. This is by far the most interesting QB situation in the UFL. They also have former Broncos receiver Cody Latimer, who I actually played flag football with last summer. I talked to him a little bit about the spring leagues and he was really, really excited to return to spring football. So it's cool to see him land with Wade and the Brahmas. And in one of the best marketing moves across any of the leagues, the Brahmas made a splash signing. 
They had a uh, kicker, Matt Amendola, on roster, the same guy who booted a game winner last year against the Bengals when he was filling in for Houston, but opted to sign YouTube star Destroying as their kicker. So maybe Tom Grossi and I do have a chance to play the game we love once again. And that is your UFL primer. We will recap week one with winners and losers. I don't know if we're going to do every week yet. It depends on how well that episode does, but we will be there. Thanks for watching That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here on YouTube. Come back because we got a Bo Nix episode in the works.